Today's an exciting day on the farm for two reasons. Reason number one, we're gonna be taking out our 30 acre corn plot where we have 12 rows half mile long of 20 different hybrids ranging from 95 day to 108 day maturity. And reason number two, this should be the last field of corn harvest that we have and we'll be done combining for the year. At this end of the plot, we have our Stein short corn entries. So as you can tell, this corn's only six to seven foot tall compared to our normal, what we call tall corn, which can be between eight and nine feet tall. And since this corn is shorter and in the same plot as the rest of our entries, we had to put a 12 row buffer on each end of our short corn entries. That way there is no shadowing effect from the tall corn uh, blocking the sunlight to the shorter plants. So we just have 12 rows of buffer on each side, which the data we won't collect because we just used a uh, spare seed at the end that was some short corn seed left over. It works good to combine this plot because all of our entries are 12 rows. So we're using our 12 row corn head. That way we'll collect all the data or the yield data for each entry. And then I'll put it on a spreadsheet so we know where we're at ranking wise for all of the hybrids. Here you can see the 12 rows we're taking are the short corn and 24 rows over is the tall corn. And some of the benefits or the reasons to plant and we tried short corn are Reason number one, where we're at down here in Southwest Minnesota, it seems like we're very prevalent to get large windstorms and thunderstorm events. So with this shorter stature corn, it has a stronger stalk to help it stay standing upright during some of those wind events that we do have in season and even later in season, right drain and prior to harvest time. And reason number two, why we're trying short corn in the plot is for access to the field. Rather than us having to pay someone to bring a haggy high boy sprayer in here to apply fungicide, with this short corn that's only seven, six feet tall, you can often get in here with a John Deere sprayer and do the fungicide applications yourself, which could be a potential huge cost saving for us if we switch the whole operation over to short stature corn. We now have the first three short corn entries harvested and out of the plot. They all averaged right around 220 but it's hard to say whether that's gonna be high for the plot or low for the plot. So we'll have to see once we get the rest of everything combined, how that stacks up to see if short corn's something that we're interested in in the future, or if it was just something we tried one year and stick with the convention. I made my way into the combine now. You can see this is the last entry of the short corn. There's about a foot, foot and a half difference between the corn that I'm combining right now and the next 12 rows over. So this is that buffer I was talking about we're not gonna be using this data. That's what it's yielding so far. Instantaneous yield, 230, 240. But since these rows were shaded by that corn right there, this data we will not use. So this is just corn that we're combining, just to combine. Got to the end of our short corn entries. It's really obvious to tell now from the combine perspective that we're back into the tall corn. There it is, we're into the tall corn. You can just tell from the previous shot, this corn's eight, nine feet tall. Nothing wrong with it. Yielding fairly decent, just tall corn. We'll have to see how things stack up at the end. Before we get any further combining, here's the list of the 20 hybrids that we had in our plot that I'm currently combining. And I'm gonna take a guess as to which one of the 20 is gonna win the plot. And I'm gonna go with DKC DeKalb 101.35. If you wanna play along, put your guess down below in the comments. And we'll see at the end of the video which one truly comes out with the high yield winner. I just got into our earliest hybrid and 95 day corn from DeKalb. It's yielding really good. It's definitely really dry, 14, 15%. The reality is we like to combine the plot all at the same day. So that means some of this stuff on the earlier end of the maturity is gonna be a lot drier. And some of the stuff later in maturity, like our 108 corn, that's gonna be fairly wet yet. In determining our winning hybrid for the plot, we do take into consideration and factor in the higher moisture for some of the later maturities and shrink those bushels back down to 15.5%. That way, the moisture content is level across all the hybrids, so we have a true measurement of yield across all of our plot. Right now, I'm combining DKC 9621, and it's a VT4 Pro corn, so a new corn trait that's gonna be coming out next year. And I'm impressed. The yield monitor just struggles to drop below 250. New hybrid, great results. Definitely one I'm gonna circle down on my sheet to check into for next growing season. Now we're in some of the latest corn that we have. As you can tell, the moisture is starting to pick up. So are the bushels per acre. We had a lot of heat units here this summer. 
So some of this later corn is really going to excel in the plot. This one might be tough to beat. This 108.64, it's pushing 290. I haven't seen a drop below 270 yet, to be honest. So we'll have to see. we still got 15 entries to go, but this one's looking like the top dog for the time being. Well, that's a first. The green tank's 99% full, basically full. Didn't even make it half a round. It's averaging 275. So he's gonna come around. We're gonna unload right here so I can finish this entry. We are exactly halfway done with our harvesting of the test plot. Since it's just Dad and I out here combining today, we're bringing trucks back and forth between the yard. So now I'm walking to the semi, that way I can bring that one up to the yard. We made it home with both trucks. Kind of cool, you can see all the corn in the hopper, but I'm checking the bin. Looks like there should be enough room in here to unload those two. But after that, I don't know where we're gonna put the corn. Here's an overview of our bin site and all the bins we have here at the main farm. And since today's the last day of harvest, the bins are starting to get full. So right now we're trying to top fill our dry bin currently, and then there's one or two loads left to go in the wet bin. And then depending on how our last little bit yields out there in the field, we have room for maybe another six to 800 bushels to go in the corn bin. So there's a lot of climbing and a lot of checking bins right now to make sure we don't overfill a bin because that can damage the structural integrity of the roof of the bin. It's hard to look inside the bin when you're loading it at the same time because bees wings and dust just fill your eyes and get all over your face. But it looks like there's gonna be enough room in this bin for this boat I'm unloading right now. Well, the dry bin's full, maybe a little bit too full. Now I think there's enough room in the wet bin so I'll get the distributor switched over. We'll try to put one more load in there, see where we end up. I got my load unloaded. Nan's gonna be bringing back another semi-truck here shortly. Worst case scenario, if there isn't enough room in that bin or any of the other bins, we'll just leave the semi-trucks filled. The main thing for today is we just wanna get that plot out. We're done combining for the year. Working on the last 12 rows, you can see there's a coyote. Coyote came running out. It's kind of interesting to see all the animals and critters that come running out once you start finishing up a field. Here we go with the last 12 rows of the year. Coincidentally, it's the 10135 number, so I'm not in the combine, but this is the number I have picked to win it all. If you haven't got your guess in, put it in soon because the results are going to be coming up shortly here. Here's the wet bin I'm filling now. There's really no great way to know in the bin. It's full, full. We have these yellow, white bin indicators on the side. Those are just a gauge of once the grain hits that point. Since we kind of want to peak the grain up in the top, there's really no great way other than climbing the steps. So let's head on up. I'm gonna wait up here at the top of the bin and watch inside that little manhole to make sure I don't overload it. I was standing up there watching it fill and I now see the flaw in the design that we did in this project this summer. So this sensor right here, it says once the grain gets this high on the bin, which is just a couple of feet down from the top, it's gonna shut us off on the pits. Well, unfortunately, I don't want the pits to shut off right now because I'm trying to top fill this bin. We had this on here thinking that when we we're using this as a wet bin, we didn't want to unload the pits, but now since we're just using it for storage, end of the year, it's shutting me off. So I'm gonna climb back down, see if there's a breaker I can switch to get that thing just to be off. That way I can run the pits to top fill this bin. I'm gonna see if flipping the controls back to manual will allow me to run it. That way I can top fill the bin. And right now it seems like it's working. 
I'm glad that worked. All I had to do was shut those sensors off inside the panel box and then switch the uh, pits to manual rather than automatic and it allowed me to keep filling the wet bin even though it's technically full based off the sensors but this way I can cone it up. So glad that worked. I have to remember that for next year. Looking back from the first day we started combining soybeans to today being the last day of combining corn it took us 45 days to get the crop out. Given we had a couple days off there because of rain and snow but most of those days were spent combining but now now that we're done let's start taking a look at some of this plot data so we can start making decisions for next year on seed decisions. It's now time to reveal the data from the plot that we combined today. And here they are. To my surprise, the winner is DKC 11010. Maybe you guessed that hybrid. I didn't. I maybe should have thought about it a little more given we had one of the hottest summers on record here. This 110 day hybrid really had a full season of heat to expand on its yield potential. The hybrid I picked, 10135, ended up down at number 13. Still an impressive yield of 245, but not nearly as impressive as 274. Now looking at the short corn hybrids that we were combining on the one side of the plot, those I have highlighted in yellow. Those ones landed in the bottom third of the yield rankings for my test plot. Moving forward, is this something I'm gonna be interested in? I absolutely love the idea of being able to have a stronger stock, being able to get in there with a different sprayer to do fungicide applications, but I don't think for our operation it makes sense to give up that yield advantage. When you look from the three short stature corn hybrids that I had in the plot versus some of the ones at the top of the yield rankings, they're just too far of a bushel difference to justify the ease of using the short corn hybrids. So for right now, we're not going to be switching any of our crop plants for 2024 over to short maturity hybrids, but it's still something we're very interested in. So we'll keep testing with it and playing with it in plots similar to this for years to come. Well, there you have it. That's our farm's corn test plot data for this year. We're going to use those in conglomeration with some other neighbor farmers that did test plots to go ahead and make seed decisions for next year. Looking back on this year, we have a lot to be thankful for. We had a bountiful harvest. Everyone stayed safe and healthy. But just like anything, we have to start taking those next steps to begin preparing for our next season. And we have a bunch of winter projects that are going to be coming.